Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Storytime. It's great to be back, and we are going to pick up where we left off with our story time all about lions. Before we start our story time today, did you know that there are actually eight different species of lions in the world? There are all different kinds. I didn't know that. I thought there was only one. Actually, there are many kinds of lions, and we always kind of think of lions as being these huge cats, which they are. They're actually only the second largest species of cat in the world. Do you know what the largest cat in the world is? It's a tiger, the very close stripy relative of the lions. You know, there's lots of fun facts about lions out there and maybe we're gonna learn a few today. So let's start our story time about lions with our song. For our song, we need three signs. We need more, read, and happy. Are you ready? The more we read together, 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 the more we read together, how happy we'll be. Big books and small books and short books and tall books, the more we read together, how happy we'll be. Excellent job. Let's start our story time all about lions. Tegrin's Tawny, Scrawny, Lion, A Little Golden Book by Katherine Jackson Illustrated by Gustav Tegrin Once there was a tawny, scrawny, hungry lion who could never get enough to eat. He chased monkeys on Monday, kangaroos on Tuesday, zebras on Wednesday, bears on Thursday, camels on Friday, and on Saturday, elephants. And since he caught everything he ran after, that lion should have been as fat as butter. But he wasn't at all. The more he ate, the scrawnier and hungrier he grew. The other animals didn't feel one bit safe. They stood at a distance and tried to talk things over with the tawny, scrawny lion. "'It's all your fault for running away,' he grumbled. "'If I didn't have to run, run, run for every single bite I get, I'd be as fat as butter and sleek as satin.' Then I wouldn't have to eat so much, and you'd last longer. Just then, a fat little rabbit came hopping through the forest, picking berries. All the animals looked at him and grinned slyly. Rabbit, they said. Oh, you lucky rabbit. We appoint you to talk things over with the lion. That made the little rabbit feel very proud. What shall I talk about? he asked eagerly. Oh, any old thing, said the big animals. The important thing is to go right up close. So the fat little rabbit hopped right up to the big hungry lion and counted his ribs. You look much too scrawny to talk things over, he said. So how about supper at my house first? Mm, what's for supper? asked the lion. The little rabbit said, carrot stew. That sounded awful to the lion, but the little rabbit said, Yes, sir, my five fat sisters and my four fat brothers are making a delicious big carrot stew right now. What are we waiting for? cried the lion. And he went hopping away with the little rabbit, thinking of ten fat rabbits and looking just as jolly as you please. Well, <laughs> grinned all the big animals, that should take care of the tawny, scrawny lion for today. Before very long, the lion began to wonder if they would ever get to the rabbit's house. First, the fat little rabbit kept stopping to pick berries and mushrooms and all sorts of good-smelling herbs. And when his basket was full, what did he do but flop down on the river bank? Wait a bit, he said. I want to catch a fish for the stew. That was almost too much for the hungry lion. For a moment, he thought he would have to eat that one little rabbit right then and there. But he kept saying five fat sisters and four fat brothers over and over to himself. And at last, the two were on their way again. Here we are, said the rabbit, hopping around a turn with the lion close behind him. Sure enough, there was the rabbit's house with a big pot of carrot stew bubbling over an open fire. And sure enough, there were nine more fat, merry little rabbits hopping around it. When they saw the fish, they popped them into the stew along with the mushrooms and the herbs. The stew began to smell very good indeed. And when they saw the tawny, scrawny lion, they gave him a big bowl of hot stew. And then they hopped about so busily that really it would have been quite a job for that tired, hungry lion to catch even one of them. So he gobbled his stew, but the rabbits filled his bowl again. When he had eaten all he could hold, they heaped his bowl with berries. And when the berries were gone, the tawny, scrawny lion 
wasn't scrawny anymore. He felt so good and fat and comfortable that he couldn't even move. Here's a fine thing, he said to himself. All these fat little rabbits and I haven't room inside for even one. He looked at all those fine, fat little rabbits and wished he'd get hungry again. Mind if I stay a while? he asked. We wouldn't even hear of your going, said the rabbits. Then they plumped themselves down in the lion's lap and began to sing songs. And somehow, even when it was time to say good night, that lion wasn't one bit hungry. Home he went, through the soft moonlight, singing softly to himself. He curled up in his bed, patted his sleek, fat tummy, and smiled. When he woke up in the morning, it was Monday. Time to chase monkeys, said the lion. But he wasn't one bit hungry for monkeys. What he wanted was some more of that tasty carrot stew. So off he went to visit the rabbits. On Tuesday, he didn't want kangaroos, and on Wednesday, he didn't want zebras. He wasn't hungry for bears on Thursday, or camels on Friday, or elephants on Saturday. All the big animals were so surprised and happy. They dressed in their best and went to see the fat little rabbit. Rabbit, they said. Oh, you wonderful rabbit. What in the world did you talk to the tawny, scrawny, hungry, terrible lion about? Oh, my goodness. We had such a good time with that nice, jolly lion that I guess we forgot to talk about anything at all. And before the big animals could say one word, the tawny, scrawny lion came skipping up the path. He had a basket of berries for the fat rabbit sisters and a string of fish for the fat rabbit brothers and a big bunch of daisies for the fat rabbit himself. I came for supper, he said, shaking paws all round. Then he sat down in the soft grass, looking fat as butter, sleek as satin, and jolly as all get out, all ready for another good big supper of carrot stew. Now we're going to sing a little song about the animals at the zoo, and you sing it to the tune of She'll Be Coming Around the Mountain. So we're going to start, and you just jump in when you're ready, okay? We're going to start with lions. You can hear the lions roaring at the zoo, roar, roar. You can hear the lions roaring at the zoo, roar, roar. You can hear the lions roaring, you can hear the lions roaring, you can hear the lions roaring at the zoo, roar, roar. Now we're going to do elephants. You can hear the elephants trumpeting at the zoo. You can hear the elephants trumpeting at the zoo. You can hear the elephants trumpeting. You can hear the elephants trumpeting. You can hear the elephants trumpeting at the zoo. How about monkeys? Ready? You can hear the monkeys screeching at the zoo. Screech, screech. You can hear the monkeys screeching at the zoo. Screech, screech. You can hear the monkeys screeching. You can hear the monkeys screeching. You can hear the monkeys screeching at the zoo. Screech, screech. How about bears? You can hear the bears growling at the zoo. You can hear the bears growling at the zoo. You can hear the bears growling, you can hear the bears growling, you can hear the bears growling at the zoo. How about zebras? You can hear the zebras braying at the zoo. Bray, bray. You can hear the zebras braying at the zoo. Bray, bray. You can hear the zebras braying. You can hear the zebras braying. You can hear the zebras braying at the zoo. Bray, bray. How about my favorite one, pandas? I don't think pandas make a lot of sound, so we're going to make the sound for them eating, okay? You, you can, can hear the pandas crunching at the zoo. Crunch, crunch. You can hear the pandas crunching at the zoo. You can hear the pandas crunching. You can hear the pandas crunching. You can hear the pandas crunching at the zoo. And last one, let's do lions again. Ready? You can hear the lions roaring at the zoo. Roar, roar. You can hear the lions roaring at the zoo. Roar, roar. You can hear the lions roaring. You can hear the lions roaring. You can hear the lions roaring at the zoo. Roar, roar. Good job. All right, let's get back to story time. The Lion and the Little Red Bird. Story and Pictures by Elisa Clavin. One afternoon, a little red bird saw a lion with a bushy green tail, as green as the forest. The bird had never seen anything so unusual and so pretty. Just looking at it made her happy. Lion, lion, she said, why is your tail so green? 
The lion didn't understand the bird's language. He thought she was simply chirping, and he smiled at her. The lion wandered down to a field of orange flowers. The bird watched him roll and sniff and chase butterflies, then slowly walk west with the setting sun and disappear into a cave. The bird waited on a tree nearby. She wanted to see the lion's green tail again, but the lion did not come out of the cave. So the bird made herself a soft nest and slept through the warm, starry night. In the morning, the lion came out, swishing his tail, which was no longer green but orange as a flower, orange as a butterfly, orange as the setting sun. Lion, lion! The bird chirped, astonished. Why is your tail so orange? Again, the lion did not understand the bird. He smiled at her, and climbed over the hill, and up the mountain, to a deep blue lake beneath a bright blue sky, where he soaked his tired paws while the bird splashed nearby. At the end of the day, the lion climbed back down the mountain, over the hill, and home to his cave. The bird settled down in the tree, wondering as the sky darkened about the lion and his orange tail. But in the morning, the lion's tail was no longer orange. It was the blue of the brightest blue sky, blue as the deep blue mountain lake where he'd soaked his paws. Lion, lion! The bird chirped, enchanted. How did your tail change from orange to blue? Are you a magician? The lion just smiled. And ambled over to a bush full of shiny red berries. They were beautiful berries, but very sour. Lion, the bird chirped, making a face. These berries are still too sour to eat. Why don't you pick them when they are ripe? The lion just smiled, thinking how much he liked the bird's chirping company. All afternoon, the lion picked berries while the bird nibbled sunflower seeds nearby. Once, when the lion stepped on a thorn, the bird pulled it out for him. At sundown, the lion swished his tail goodbye and returned to his cave. The bird settled down in her nest. She wondered what color the lion's tail would be in the morning. She wished he would answer her questions. During the night, a storm came. Thunder crashed and lightning flashed. Rain swept away the bird's nest. Hearing the noise, the lion rushed out and reached up into the tree, where the bird crouched, shivering and scared. He lifted her down and carried her into his cave. The cave was warm and colorful. The walls were filled with pictures of green forests, orange flowers, butterflies, sunsets, a bright blue sky, and a deep blue lake. Lion, lion! The bird chirped, delighted. How did these pictures get here? The lion smiled, dipped his tail into a bowl of the shiny red berry juice, and painted a picture of the bird chirping on a berry bush. The bird sang while the lion painted. She sang a song without any questions, all about color and joy. The lion had never heard anything so unusual and so pretty. Just listening made him happy. The bird wondered what the lion would paint that night. The end. We're going to take just a little break from our story time to do our lion craft. Our lion craft today uses your handprint for the body, and everything that you need to make this craft will be ready for you at the library to pick up and take home. Let me show you how to make this.
I hope you enjoyed our lion story time today, guys. And we have so many books about lions at the library. So if you want to learn more or if you want to read some more fun stories about lions, please call us or come by and we will show you all of our books about lions. It's time for us to say goodbye for today. So let's sing our goodbye song. For our goodbye song, we need three signs. We need time, goodbye, and friends. Are you ready? It is time to say goodbye to all our friends. It is time to say goodbye to all our friends. It is time to say goodbye. Clap your hands, wink your eyes. It's time to say goodbye to all our friends. Goodbye, everybody. I'll see you for story time next week. <laughs>